right, welcome to uh, this latest video um, in this online series specifically for my English 102 class. But if you found this and you're not part of my class, welcome. In this video, we are going to talk about how to write literature papers uh, about poetry. Okay, so I will be referring to things that are specific to my class, but the general concepts can apply to any of you. So, welcome. All right. So what we're going to be doing today comes out of chapter two out of uh, my English 102 course supplement. So if you got it, follow along. I'll be showing some clips along as well on the screen. Yeah. Okay, everything's rolling well. Okay, so in a previous video, we talked about some of the things that are specific to writing a literary analysis paper. You know, basically a uh, leveled up book report and how to use an academic source to write about it. I'm going to go into a little more detail today and we're going to talk about things that are specific to poetry papers. So let's get started. Okay, so the purpose of what we're talking about today is to review and discuss some of the more common elements of poetry. So we're going to talk about some of those. Um, I'm going to read a poem for you that I've chosen. And uh, we're going to talk about how to write about it in a paper. And, uh, and I'm also going to go further and um, we're going to find a scholarly source and kind of show how to use that source into a paper. So it might be a little bit long, but hopefully really, really useful for all of you. So thanks for watching. All right. So let's talk about literary analysis. So literary analysis is just like the name suggests. Analysis, you're breaking something down. You're breaking it apart and you're looking at what makes it up, right? Now, the problem that a lot of people run into is thinking that there's only one answer. There's only one set of things that make something. In literature, we generally take the perspective that there are a multiplicity of perspectives that are valid and that they can all provide something worthwhile to the reader to those who enjoy thinking. And that, again, is one of the reasons why we study literature in the first place. We study literature because it, it creates a, a version of reality. It doesn't mean it's always realistic, but it creates a version of reality that we can look at separate from ourselves and kind of judge and think and reflect on our humanity, our character, how we relate to the world and things in the world. And it goes on and on and on and on. Literature, gives us a vehicle for thinking and so when you write a paper about it you're basically expressing that concept we can do it for poetry as well as drama fiction whatever type of um, literature that's out there you could do this kind of analysis and paper on it but there are some characteristics which are specific to poetry that you don't really find in other sources of literature. Now, specifically, one of the things that really separates poetry is sound. There's so many different kinds of poetry, but oftentimes the poet doesn't intend for it to be read. It intends he, she intends for the poem to be heard, maybe even to be performed with sound effects and yeah, i mean we think of music like this that you know the beat and the rhythm and all these things which are much more obvious in a song than they are in poetry are just part of the song and that's also true when it comes to um sorry it, it's also true when it comes to a poem as well but sometimes it's uh you know it's printed or it's not performed by the poet but um let me give you an example now uh, our textbook that we're using for this course, sorry, is Backpack Literature. We're using the fourth edition. I believe there's a fifth edition out now. Um, if, uh, if this poem isn't in there, my apologies, but you can search it online for free. Um, okay, so this poem's by Wilfred Owen. He, um, he wrote a poem called Dulce et Decorum Est. It's, uh, it's Latin. Um, and this, this is talking about uh, World War One, specifically, and the mustard gas. Um, if you're watching this recently after this has been published, uh, we just had the movie Wonder Woman, where they they 
they they show a fictionalized version of, of something similar to this, so, so maybe it can help you kind of imagine what this is like. But I'm going to read Dulce et Decorum Est by Wilfred Owen. Listen to the sound of the poem and uh, the what the, the poet is doing um, in this poem. Okay. Bent double like old beggars under sacks, knock kneeled, coughing like hags, we cursed through sludge, till on the haunting flares we turned our backs, and turned our distant rest began to trudge. Men marched asleep, many had lost their boots, but limped on, bloodshod. All went lame, all blind, drunk with fatigue, deaf even to the hoots of tired, outstripped five nines that dropped behind. Gas! Gas! Quick, boys! An ecstasy of fumbling, fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. But someone, still, was yelling out and stumbling and floundering like a man in fire or lime, dim through the misty panes and thick green light. As under a green sea, I saw him drowning. In all my dreams, before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. If in some smothering dreams, you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in and watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face, like a devil's sick of sin. If you could hear at every jolt the blood come gargling from his froth corrupted lungs, obscene as cancer, bitter as the cud of vile, incurable sores on innocent tongues. My friend, you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory to the old lie dulce et decorum est pro patria mori that phrase the title dulce et decorum est and then it, it finishes it in the last line pro patria mori um the footnote here in your book says uh it means it is sweet and proper to die for your country What is the tone of that poem? Is it patriotic? Is it is it sad? Is it angry? Is it happy? As you listen to obviously how I read it will probably influence your reading of it yourself. But to me, it's it's cynical, it's angry, it's sarcastic it's very consistent with other writing from this time period um, that really questions why why is war necessary why is something like this necessary and there's value in the question and so we as people who read and study and write about literature maybe even write our own we're given the question is it sweet to die for one's country Maybe you feel that way. Maybe you don't. The question doesn't mean that there's just one answer, but that's the value of literature, is asking the question in a way that is poignant enough to make you think. And so again, we get back to our point from earlier, literature, good literature, is gonna make you think. And we may not agree, and that's not the point. We don't have to agree on this but it is valuable to really delve into the words of someone like Wilfred Owen, who, unless I'm mistaken, died in World War I. I just don't remember. Yeah, yeah, he died in 1918. This poem wasn't published till um, after he died. Okay. So <laughs> that's that's a highlight, right? Okay. So the reason I wanted to read that to you is 
there's such a difference between reading a poem and hearing someone read it to you especially a performance now i don't think that was a great performance i haven't memorized it or anything like that but it is a great poem that has a lot of sound a lot of cacophony a lot of dissonance that's not designed to sound pretty like a lot of poetry is it's designed to evoke imagery that is haunting and scary and to bring up sounds that are not smooth that are not easy to to say and that let me uh let me he plunges at me guttering choking drowning those aren't fun things to think about or to hear the sounds of the words sound they're not necessarily automatopoeia but they but they are they're very close to the sound words it sound like the thing that the word is and so it, it evokes um, a lot of sensory, uh, you know, sound, image, whatever, for for you, the reader or the audience, if it's being performed. So let's think. Okay, we've heard the poem. Now let's say we want to write a paper about it. So if you follow along on the screen, um, the last video we talked about how to search something like this. So. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the EAC search and your college is going to have a similar search prompt available as well. Actually, I already typed it in. So, okay, I'm going to narrow this down a little bit to help me out. So under choose a discipline to search, I'm going to choose literature. I'm also going to scroll down and choose full text and scholarly peer reviewed journals because I want to make sure I'm not just getting... Um, a news article about World War One that mentions Wilfred Owen or something like that. I want to get someone who's writing a paper that has been peer reviewed. So I'm going to go ahead and click search. I put in the search prompts Dulce et Decorum Est, which is the title, plus the author Wilfred Owen. And so this is what I find. Um, the first, well, I not a lot of sources popped up, but I get Owen's Dulce et Decorum Est, written by one John Hughes in the Explicator. In the spring of 2006 that's volume 64 issue 3 of that um, source and it's an academic journal and it does give me the option to try and find it in full text finder so I'm gonna click on it um, it doesn't have an immediate link to the the full source but what you'll find in some cases you may find that an article exists but you may not have access to it because EAC hasn't paid for that database or whatever or whatever your college is in this case uh, I couldn't find it now there's sneaky ways you could try to to find things but in this case it wasn't real simple it didn't get there right away so pardon me bless me okay so um, the other two sources here that we see also, we see this one written in British Journal of Psychiatry. It doesn't have an immediate link for it, which happens. Well, let's check. Ah, pardon me. Okay, so sometimes yeah, there might be roundabout ways to try and find these sources. It looks like we were able to find this one. So, this was written back in ooh, 2014, not too long ago. Um, ah, okay. So, that's the poem. but it's not an article about it someone just republished it which doesn't help us so this source formal subversion in wilfred owen's hospital barge which is a different poem that he wrote let's see what we can find okay
we're going to click on full text finder to see if there's uh, another way to link to it there might be a couple different ways we can go about it Okay, so we did find it. It took a couple links. We got to the actual source. Yay! That's not always the way that it goes. So, okay, in this case, it's previewing it for us in PDF. Or, sorry, not in PDF. In HTML, we could download it as a PDF. Um, that's useful when it comes to citing page numbers. So, let's try to get a feel for what this is. All right, full text, Wilfred Owen is best known for depicting blah, yada, yada. They're, tell they're telling us they reference Dulce at Decorum Est, um, but it moves on. Uh, it's giving background about him, and it leads into talking about Hospital Barge. So, let's talk about whether this source might be useful for me. If I want to write about Dulce at Decorum Est, do, wanna, do I want to use this source about Hospital Barge? Well maybe there's something in those first two paragraphs that might be useful to me so there's that also we might want to go back to our search prompt and see if we need to change our search parameters so let's start by taking out the author's name searching and seeing what we can find i was able to find just a little bit more we found this source here and does have the full text which was easy to get to yay okay now this is going to be more broad it's not specifically talking just about our poem but it might have some relevant information so now I've got maybe two sources which tangentially might be able to help me out and I can also go back to my results again. And maybe one of the others that just popped up will help me out as well. Okay. Yeah, that was the one we just... Oh, no, it just showed up twice. It wasn't two more sources. It was one. Okay, so let's talk about this. We can keep searching this a couple different ways. We could search Wilfred Owen. We could keep using his title. We could try to find some other things as well and checking maybe even a different database. What's useful to learn here is sometimes you can't take just a direct approach when searching for a source, right? This is real. This is what happens in the real world. And it's not always bad that you can't find something, you know, because you are trying to add. But you can also simply acknowledge, you know, there wasn't available information but also you have to realize that just because you search for a couple minutes doesn't mean that your search was exhaustive right so let me show you another way to go about doing this there's also ooh, checking out the news for today google scholar you can get to directly from scholar.google.com is um, is a database which is free, but it doesn't mean it gives you access to everything um, that Google has that a lot of people don't know about. But it's really useful for a lot of reasons. You can save sources in here. A lot of really cool stuff. Narrow it down to articles, things like that. Similar to what we uh, we did in the previous video. So, Dulce at Decorum Est. So, now, when I search this... Um, it's I haven't really narrowed this down yet but it's gonna also bring up books and a few other things as well uh, for example the first book that pops up is actually you see who the author is W Owen that's probably just a book of his poetry make sense just because you find it doesn't mean it's gonna add something new for you here is another book it's uh, by an A. Panajati Jody uh, called Mapping the World of Anglo American Studies. Blah, 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 yada, yada. They're talking about war, which makes sense why they're going to bring this up. 
and we have other sources as well. So you can start going through these and seeing what's useful. Let's back up and let's say that our article here, these first two paragraphs, that there's something in there that we want to use. Great. Um, the first thing that you want to do in, an, in a literary analysis paper is not just focus exclusively on what others have said about your source material. The first thing you want to do is make sure you have something valid to say, something that you can back up, right? Then you wanna bring in these outside sources to help you to make your point or to flesh out that perspective that you're giving. And depending on what you're talking about, you might be comparing Wilfred Owens, Dolce de Cormest to some sort of modern poem that was written by a soldier um, in Afghanistan or, or Iraq or some current conflict. Um, maybe someone who's escaped from Syria or something like that. And you can compare them and then you get this whole other um, type of source that you can bring in as well. And uh, you can add perspective because what are the things that are unique about this is he's not just you know some English guy who's writing a poem but he was a soldier and he died if I remember correctly and I don't want to get this wrong I think he died after armistice was over which is super sad so which happened but okay so this was probably a little bit confusing but hopefully it helped out a little bit so let's review some of the things we talked about in this. We talked about some of the things that make poetry unique, things like sound um, that makes the poem unique. It's also just a completely different form visually. It's typically shorter, things like that. Um, I read a poem. We talked about it a little bit. We looked for some sources and we talked about how you can use tangential sources, sources to bring in information together to make the point that you want to make, not just to regurgitate the information that someone else has said about the source and again at this point you are this isn't your first time writing a paper you've done it before you have sources before we're just talking about how to find this kind of source and how to bring it in how you use it is exactly like you would use any other source use it as it's relevant but you also want to use it honestly if this argument in this paper has nothing to do with what you're trying to say or you're taking their point out of context. You don't do that because that's not honest with the source because by using a source, you're implying that you are relaying um, what they have to say about the source or what their argument is consistent with how you're presenting it. And if you take something out of context, no matter what it is, that's academically dishonest and you don't want to do that because uh, you're twisting something whether on purpose or accident you don't want to do that so um hopefully this video was helpful for you there'll be more videos coming as we continue throughout the semester so i hope you find this useful if you have questions ask me in the comments below um we'll see you in the next one thanks for watching